Hi, hello my darlings. Welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the third topic in our uh, Secrets of Shopping series. And this one is all about the money. We're making it rain. Okay, we're not making it rain. Actually, this is quite the opposite of making it rain. We're not out to be a baller. We are just setting our boundaries. Start this off with a story about when I needed to buy a new mattress. I walked into this, you know, local mattress store and we were greeted immediately and the salesperson asked if there was anything that we could be helped with. And of course, you know, we explained, yeah, we're looking for a new mattress and we've never really bought a new mattress before. We're still in our early 20s. This was myself and my ex-husband, why I keep saying we. Um, there's not more than one of me in here. Although sometimes I wonder. <laughs> and we tell the salesperson that we're looking for a new mattress. We've never really bought one before. Um, so we don't really know what to look for. And instead of asking questions about our needs, what kind of sleepers we are, how firm we like it, what's our budget, he immediately walked us over to this super fancy mattress that had all kind of, like I had a whole control panel. It felt like I was, you know, steering some important equipment for NASA and you know tells us oh lay down test it out see how it feels and of course it feels incredible and he's adjusting you know the feet height and raising the headboard and uh, it's just a phenomenal and we're super comfortable and he's like yeah how does that feel it's great right you know and it, you can also get this extension and there's this add-on and you know if you really want to go for it you know you can add you know these pillows and they're super you know high-tech memory foam and my ex-husband and I just kind of looked at each other like, this is great, but am I, what am I getting into? Then he proceeds to give us the price and we are floored. Um, they may still be picking my jaw up off the floor at that time and place, you know, on the time space continuum. Uh, because I was not prepared for the price that the man dropped on us. We were in there looking to spend, you know, a few hundred dollars. We didn't need anything fancy. We just needed to replace, you know, a basic, basic mattress. But he didn't ask the right questions to get us to where we needed. And one of those questions, which usually is the most important question for many people, no matter what it is that they're purchasing, how much is it? So when it comes to clothing, you can buy clothing that is super expensive or super inexpensive. And either way, it doesn't really matter. I obviously would prefer if you are spending your money on more quality pieces and Quality does not necessarily dictate a high price. Uh, I will tell you that. When you're buying clothes, you have to consider how much you're willing to spend on any given item. So let's talk winter coats. Winter coats tend to be a pricey purchase to begin with. They have lots of layers. The fabric is very dense. The construction required is a lot more intricate than you know a t-shirt. Uh, so you're going to have to expect to pay at least $60 if you're buying one brand new in season. Uh, and that depends again on the style of coat. You know, if you are looking for a long coat, you may expect to spend a lot more, you know, closer to $100. And that's on the very low end. You can spend, you know, two, three, four, ten times that if you want. But at the average, like what most people are generally comfortable spending on say like a long wool or even faux wool, you know, um, coat, it's probably somewhere like $150. And uh, one thing that you can do is if you're watching and you're thinking, oh my God, $150 for a coat, I would never. Um, and that thinking can go both ways. You can be thinking, oh my God, $150 for a coat? I would never, that's far too cheap. It's not gonna last. Or you could be on the other side thinking, $150 for a coat? What is she smoking? I ain't spending that. 
And that's fine too, but it's all about knowing your price threshold. So if you're on that lower end and you don't want to spend $150, my advice to you is to go out of season and buy your clothes. So right now it's June, it's the beginning of June, and it's getting warm pretty much everywhere. I would say the exception is, you know, um, of course the Southern Hemisphere, they're going into winter. And here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are headed to summer, unless you're, you know, somewhere like way close to the North Pole. Um, it's probably not quite as warm, um, but you're not freezing your buns off either. And now would be the time uh, in the Northern Hemisphere for you to go and buy uh, your winter clothes. You know, start looking through the racks of um, old sale merchandise from last winter and, you know, start thinking ahead about what you're going to need. And then in, say, in September, October, uh, go in and think about what you'll need next spring or summer. If you tend to gain weight uh, over the winter, you know, look to buy shorts now that you can get at a reduced price, especially if that weight gain is temporary. So you'll have something that fits when weather breaks in next spring and you go to put some shorts on and suddenly they don't fit because you gained winter weight, which happens. Like, what are you going to do about it? Uh, what you're going to do about it is pre-plan and buy your shorts this fall when the retailers are clearancing out all of the summer merchandise because they now have to make room for the fall and winter merchandise. The part of this knowing your price threshold is also doing your research to see what items run. As I mentioned, um, a price of like a low mid-range coat, uh, like a long wool coat, you can expect to find, you know, probably if you hunt well enough for like 150 or $200. And um, it's not a really expensive coat. It'll last you for like quite a long time as long as you take care of it. Honestly, side note, as long as you take care of anything, it can last a really long time. Um, but the key is to go looking at the item that you want and do, uh, like I recommended in my shopping video, how to shop like a stylist, uh, some pre-shopping. And you're going to scout out, you know, of course, check the Amazon, check, um, you know, whatever retailer you enjoy shopping with most, go to Google and type in what you're looking for. So like long wool coat, uh, and you can even change your settings. Like when there's the everything, um, I think it's all images and then um, shopping. And if you change it to shopping, it will show you like what's available now, um, what like typical prices are. You can kind of sort and filter to see uh, something that's more relevant to the exact item that you're looking for. And that'll help you get comfortable with the idea of spending a certain amount of money on any specific item, no matter what it is. So if you have expectations of going to buy a winter coat in uh, this October, when things start to get cold, and you're only expecting to spend maybe $80 for a long wool coat, and then you go do a Google search and you find that long wool coats are running anywhere from you know 200 to 250 this year because there was a shortage of wool from an unseasonably warm summer uh, then you know you can adjust your standards or you know um, look for secondhand options there are some great options uh, for sustainable shopping uh, another video coming on that one soon so won't spoil any of that uh, but yeah. So think outside the box as to how you can accomplish your mission of purchasing this long wool coat at the price that you're comfortable purchasing it at. And, you know, devise a game plan, but stick to your price threshold and your budget because if you exceed that threshold, say you're willing to spend that $80 and you end up spending $100, you'll either have one of two reactions. You're either gonna be super glad that you spent the extra because it was quality, it's worth it, you know, it's gonna last you a little bit longer, name brand, whatever features were that you ultimately chose to spend the extra monies for. Or you're going to constantly kick yourself that you overspent on it, and every time you put it on, you're going to dredge up those feelings of 
feeling like you were duped or, you know, suckered into it and or pressured or, you know, all those awful feelings that you have that come up when you're like, I really screwed up. I made a huge freaking mistake. I shouldn't have spent that. And even if it's only $10, like that, if that $10 is important to you, it's important to you. You can't minimize that just because it's quote, only $10. So my little chickadees, when you are pre-shopping, make sure that you first do your research Second, set your price threshold for what you're willing to spend. And third, make sure you stick to that price threshold unless you can justify with positive emotions that spending more is going to be worth it for you. And until next time, my lovely darlings, I want you to mind your style. Bye.